Okay, right. Uh, so, uh, we are talking about slow channel myasthenic syndrome. Okay, so I want to now explain to you why having a uh, slow channel myasthenic syndrome mutation uh, is going to lead to multiple action potentials firing along the uh, sarcolemma. So, the acetylcholine is bound to the uh, nicotinic acetylcholine receptor, where one of the subunits in this nicotinic acetylcholine receptor has now got a slow channel um, mutant, basically. Okay, mutation. Uh, so, um, that's going to mean that this channel is open for far too long. Now, what's that going to cause? Well, it's basically going to mean that positive charge, positively charged ions will move into the cell through this channel and then what they will lead to is an action potential firing along the sarcolemma like I've described in the previous video but then what will happen is you'll get to this other side of the action potential here and this channel will still be open so what will happen now? Well you'll undergo the depolarization again and it would actually happen right back here uh, but I'll draw it here anyway so you'll get re depolarization of the cell membrane because this channel is still open and therefore you'll get another action potential firing when you get up to threshold potential again. So you get multiple action potentials firing due to the same acetylcholine signal. That is not normal basically. Normally what happens is the acetylcholine binds these channels open for a tiny period that leads to one depolarization. The membrane then fires an action potential but that's it. You only get one action potential because by the time you get back here, they're in the closed desensitized state. So they're not capable of depolarizing the membrane again. So um, in the slow channel syndrome, what you get is these multiple action potentials propagating along your uh, sarcolemma due to just one stimulation by the alpha motor neuron. And that's going to mean that when you actually try to contract your muscle, what you're going to get is multiple contractions afterwards. So your movements will become very jerky because your uh, myocytes will uh, contract and then they'll contract again and they'll contract again. So you won't just get one contraction, you'll get multiple contractions uh, just from trying to produce one contraction. Okay, right. So that's the first thing that happens in slow channel myasthenic syndrome. The other thing to say is that gradually what this causes is it causes atrophy of the skeletal muscle cells. So over time, what will happen in these people with these uh, slow channel syndrome mutant uh, nicotinic acetylcholine receptors is the muscle cells will just gradually waste away. So you get skeletal muscle cell atrophy. So they gradually lose all of their skeletal muscle cells. Well, not all of them, but a huge number of them. Skeletal muscle cell atrophy. And this leads to many people with these slow channel syndrome mutations uh, becoming wheelchair bound because the muscles just simply do not have the um, um, strength to hold up the body anymore. Okay, uh, in addition what it's going to cause prior to the, the uh, wheelchair boundedness is it's going to cause muscle weakness. So if you've got less muscle cells within the muscle then you're going to have weakness in that muscle and, uh, as I say, eventually it can lead to wheelchair boundedness. So, it's a pretty horrible hereditary disease, and it is hereditary. It's autosomal dominant, basically. So you only need one mutant of each of these uh, receptor subunits. So for each of these receptor subunits, say, let's take the alpha-1 subunit in specific specifically, you'll have... Uh, two genes for that alpha-1 subunit. You'll have one on your maternal chromosome and one on your paternal chromosome. You only need one of those to have one of these slow channel syndrome mutations in it in order to develop uh, slow channel myasthenic syndrome. Uh, because uh, once you've got one with a mutant in, that means that you will produce nicotinic acetylcholine receptors with that mutant uh, alpha-1 subunit in, and those nicotinic acetylcholine receptors will then have this longer mean open time um, and therefore uh, you will get the uh, slow channel syndrome. Right, and one more thing just to say that uh, slow channel syndrome is an example of a congenital myasthenic syndrome. So there are a number 
of uh, syndromes which are uh, inherited, uh, which cause muscle weakness. And they all affect certain portions of the neuromuscular junction um, um, machinery. So slow channel syndrome specifically affects the uh, nicotinic acetylcholine receptors of the neuromuscular junction, but there are other myasthenic syndromes which are congenital, known as congenital myasthenic syndromes, which also lead to problems with neuromuscular junction transmission and affect other components of the neuromuscular junction machinery. Okay, so uh, slow channel myasthenic syndrome is an example of a congenital myasthenic syndrome, and congenital myasthenic syndrome syndromes are often abbreviated to CMSs. Okay, so thanks for watching.